it's really interesting to talk about these wild ideas about the future, whether it's mm -hmm. aliens, whether it's AI, with brilliant people like yourself who are focused on very particular tools of science we have today to solve very particular, like rigorous scientific questions. And it's almost like putting on this wild dreamy hat, like some percent of the time and say like, what are, mm -hmm. like, what would alien civilizations look like? What would alien trash look like? Well, what would our own civilization that sends out trillions of AI systems out there, like how 9,000, but 10,000 out there, what would that look like? And you're right, any one prediction is probably going to be horrendously mm -hmm. wrong, but there's something about creating these kind of wild predictions I know, I know, that kind of opens up no, um, there's a huge magnetism to it, right? And some of some of it, um, you know, I mean, some of the Jules Verne novels did a phenomenal job predicting the future, right? <laughs> uh, that that actually was a great example of what you're talking about, like right? allowing your imagination to run free. I mean, I just hope, I just hope there there's dragons. That's there's like dragons yeah, that's, I love dragons. Yeah, dragons are the best. Um, <laughs> uh, but see, the cool thing about sci science fiction and these kinds of mm -hmm. conversations, it doesn't just predict the future. I think some of these things will create the future. Pla planting the idea. This is how the humans are amazing. Like fake it till you make it. <laughs> it, it humans are really good at uh, taking an idea that seems impossible at the time. And for one, any one individual human, that idea is like a, it's like planting a seed yes. that eventually it's materializes true. itself. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird yeah, how yeah, like yeah. science fiction can create science. It drives some of it the- It drives the yeah, science. I agree with you. And uh, and I think in this regard, you know, I, I'm like a sucker for for sci-fi. <laughs> um, it's it's all I, listen to like now when I when I run and um and some of it is completely implausible right and I was just like I don't care it's it's, it's so it's um uh, it's both entertaining and uh you know it's just like it's imagination you know about the black clouds book uh, I think this is by Fred Hoyle this is like this has great connections with sort of a lot of the advancements that are happening in NLP um right now mm -hmm. right with you know, transformer models and so on. But, uh, you know, it's this black cloud shows up in in the solar system. And then, you know, you, people try to send radio and then it learns to talk back at you, wow. you know? So anyway, we don't have to talk at all about it, but it's just, it's something worth checking out. With that, that on the alien front with the, the, like a black cloud, to me, on the, exactly on the NLP front, and also just explainability of AI, it's fascinating, just the very question Stephen Wolfram looked at this with the movie Arrival. It's like, what would be the common language that we would discover? The The reason that's really interesting to me is we have uh, aliens Jap here on Earth Japanese. now. Japanese. Japanese, well, yeah. yeah. Japanese is the obvious answer. <laughs> Japanese, yeah, that yeah. would be the common. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it would be music, actually. Uh, that's more likely. It wouldn't be a language. It would be art that they would communicate. But, you know, yeah. I, I do believe that we have, I'm with uh, Stephen Wolfram on this a little bit, that to me, computation, like programs we write that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that they're kind of intelligent creatures. And I feel like we haven't found the common language to talk with them. Like our little creations that are artificial are not born with the, whatever that innate thing that produces language with us. And like coming up with mechanisms for communicating with them uh, is, um, is an effort that feels like it will produce some incredible discoveries. You can even think of, mm -hmm. if you think that math is discovered, mathematics in itself is a kind of... Um, oh yeah, it's an innate construction mm -hmm. of, of the world we live in. Um, I think we are, you know, a part of the way there because pre-1950, right, computers were, were human beings that would carry out arithmetic, mm -hmm. right? And I think it was Ulam, um, who worked in Los Alamos at, at the uh, at the time, like towards the end of the Second World War, uh, wrote something about how you know in the future, right, computers will not be just arithmetic tool, but will be truly an interactive you know thing with which you could do 
experiments, right? At the mm -hmm. time, the notion of doing an experiment not like in the lab with some beakers, but you know, an experiment on a computer, designing an experiment, a numerical experiment, mm -hmm. was a new one. That's like, you know, 70% of what I do <laughs> is I design, you know, I write code, terrible code to be uh, clear, like, but, you know, I write code that creates an experiment, which is a, which is a simulation. So, in that sense, I think we're beginning to interact with the computer in, in a way that you're saying, not as just a you know fancy calculator, not as just a you know call and request uh, type of thing, but but you know something that can generate uh, generate insights that are otherwise completely unattainable. Mm -hmm. Right, they're unattainable by doing analytical mathematics. Yeah, and there's uh, like with AlphaFold two. We're now trying to, we're now starting to crack open biology. So being able to si simulate at first trivial biological systems mm -hmm. and hopefully down the line, complex biological systems. Right. My hope is to be able to simulate psycho psychological, like sociological systems like humans. I've, you know, um, a large part of my work at, at MIT was on, on autonomous vehicles. Mm -hmm. And the fascinating thing to me was about uh, pedestrians human pedestrians interacting with autonomous vehicles and simulating those systems without murdering humans mm -hmm. would be very useful, but it nevertheless is exceptionally so. difficult. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> when is my Mustang gonna drive itself? <laughs> right, it's, you know, I'm not even joking, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. I, it turns out it's much difficult, it's much more difficult than we imagined. Yeah. And, and I, I suppose that's the kind of, the um, progress of science is uh, just like, you know, going to Mars, it's probably going to turn out to be way more difficult than we imagine. Sending out probes to investigate planet nine at the edge of our solar system might turn out to be way more difficult than we imagine, but we do it anyway. Yeah. And we figure it out in the end. It's actually Mars is a great, I mean, going, sending humans to Mars, is way more complicated than hum sending humans to the moon. You'd think just like naively, yeah. both are in space, who cares? Like, well, if you go there, why don't you go there? Um, you know. This life support is a, is an extremely expensive thing. Yeah, there's a bunch of extra challenges, but I disagree with you. I would be one of the early people to go. I used to think not. Yeah, I used to think I'd be one of the first, maybe million to go. Once you have a little bit of a society, I think I'm, I'm upgrading myself to the first like ten thousand. Yeah.